If you're feeling too fatigued to await Starship's first orbital flight, well, I get it. But space is always a wild field. You can never go there unprepared. And that's why it's taking so long for SpaceX to launch their vehicle. Because SpaceX doesn't want that mission to fail and end up in a massive disaster. But happily, after 11 years of testing and fixing, SpaceX is launching Starship Super Heavy next week. Scientists, they've got ants in their pants. Let's find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX is developing Starship to carry people and cargo to the moon, Mars, and beyond. The deep space transportation system consists of a huge first stage booster called Super Heavy and an upper stage spacecraft known as Starship, both of which are designed to be fully reusable. For months now, SpaceX has been gearing up for the first ever Starship orbital test flight, which will be carried out by the Super Heavy prototype Booster 7 and a Starship vehicle called Ship 24. In mid-March, SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk said the landmark flight from SpaceX's Starbase facility in South Texas might launch as soon as the third week of April. And last weekend, Musk said more than days away, but hopefully not many weeks away. Well, Musk is known to be overly optimistic about his timelines, but strangely, recent developments suggest the attempt could come even sooner than that. SpaceX rolled Ship 24 out to the Starbase orbital launch pad over the last weekend, and multiple Starship watchers have observed, and on Monday, April 3rd, the company conducted fueling tests with Booster 7 on the orbital launch mount. Right after that, SpaceX had the fully stacked Starship, Besides, a ton of propellant deliveries are shooting for the same date, and in addition, navigational warnings have been issued for the Starship orbital attempt, as Netherlands-based satellite tracker Marco Langbroek noted. Those warnings cover a window of April 6 to April 12th. Next space flight updated the first full-stack launch of Starship and Super Heavy on Monday, April 10th at 1955 GMT. The launch time for the Starship orbital flight is based on the marine hazard zone. As standard practice, next space flight uses those as a placeholder until the precise window is known. The actual time will likely be slightly later. Not rushing, NASA is apparently tentatively reserving the use of its high-altitude WB-57 aircraft for observation of the Starship test flight. That's set April 10th and 11, Berger wrote over the weekend, the agency's closely tracking SpaceX progress with the massive rocket as it intends to use the Starship vehicle as a lunar lander for its astronauts as part of the Artemis moon missions. Regardless, for starters, the company's still waiting for a launch license from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, as Musk said last month. Adding a launch license from the FAA is an excellent sign that Starship is ready to go. Once the rocket's fully stacked, SpaceX can proceed with attempting to launch. Last month, Musk tweeted SpaceX should have a launch license from the FAA in a few weeks, and if all goes to plan, his guess was a launch in the third week of April, the joke being the third week of April contains April 20th, 420, and he said before that he never tries to line up with those numbers, but they just always come calling to him. Anyway, April appears to hold great promise. And we know this is when scientists are really stirred by the potential of Starship, SpaceX and the founder Elon Musk, they view Starship as the key rocket to take humans to Mars and eventually build a self-sustaining settlement there. But such a vehicle would have a myriad of other uses for science, exploration, and defense purposes. As scientists start to think less about mass as a constraint, they'll run into other barriers to building more planetary spacecraft. Only a relatively small number of people in the world know how to build these vehicles, and training more will take time. There's also a limited number of ground-based facilities where the spacecraft can be subject to vacuum and vibration testing. Then there's cost. The most expensive part of a launch with a scientific probe is not the rocket, but the spacecraft. Just because Starship is flying, I don't expect that all of a sudden the science mission directorate's budget is going to double, the NASA official said. However, Starship might eventually be able to pare back those costs, especially with the capability to launch frequently. Consider that SpaceX might provide a regular rideshare flight to Jupiter every two years, 
Several large and small probes might be carried by a single starship, using its power and propulsion to reach Jupiter's system. Once there, each spacecraft could fly into their orbit or destination and rely on starship for a communications relay back to Earth. This would provide a huge mass and propellant savings on each spacecraft. SpaceX could fly its Starship to Mars in 2024, but it'll probably be a little more than a test flight to prove the massive vehicle can execute a trans-Mars injection and then go to orbit around the Red Planet. The schedule is tight for NASA to squeeze any science probes onto the first flight, but the next Mars window opens at the end of 2026. Now that seems like a more reasonable target for both SpaceX and NASA. There are an impressive range of possibilities for NASA if it wanted to load up starships headed to Mars in that time frame. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory could build a duplicate of the Perseverance rover with a wholly different set of science instruments. The space agency might fly a pair of Mars Reconnaissance Observer clones to replace its aging communication infrastructure on Mars. Engineers could scale up the Mars Oxygen In Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, or MOXIE, and produce oxygen in much larger quantities from the Martian atmosphere. And NASA could also send a bigger drill to dig deep into the subsurface to see if the interior really is warmer and wetter. We'd also be happy to fill up a starship with ingenuities, the NASA source said, referring to the wildly successful helicopter still flying on Mars after landing early this year. Musk himself recognizes the importance of engaging with the science community and promoting the viability of Starship. Previously in one night, Musk spoke to scientists at the prestigious National Academies for more than an hour, taking question after question from scientists about Starship, planetary science, and other more esoteric topics. Well, ultimately, Starship is designed to be uh, a generalized transport mechanism for uh, the greater solar system. If you could get you know, a hundred ton object to surface of Europa, there's a lot more you can do than with a smaller object. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's very exciting. Obviously we still have a lot to prove, but architecturally it is capable of transporting kind of almost any arbitrary mass to, to any solid surface uh, in the solar system. It was somewhat odd and somewhat endearing to behold. Here was Elon Musk, the richest person in the world, so contentious on Twitter, so controversial in today's political discourse, seeming to win over some of the smartest people in the country. The scientists were appreciative of his time and eager to learn more about how Starship might help their research. There may be ice all over the solar system, but that night, Elon Musk succeeded in melting some of it right here on Earth. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.